My career started really in 1998 um, after a brief spell at college doing photography. I started working as a cruise ship photographer. I wanted to travel around the world, see the world for free uh, and get paid for it even and that was a perfect opportunity. I travelled to over 50 countries uh, during a six year period um, which gave me the opportunity to not only photograph the passengers and, and the guests on board luxury liners but it allowed me to go out and do the landscape and the wildlife photography that I had a passion for. After that period of time on the ships, I went then to Australia for a year, bought a camper van, travelled round, taking landscapes, and I had the opportunity to photograph the unique wildlife in Australia at the same time. When I returned, I started to work as a commercial photographer's assistant then, and I started to really learn about lighting and studio lighting, and uh, I became a much, much better photographer. During that period of time, I, it became quite obvious to me that I wasn't, it didn't appeal for me to work with art directors that were breathing down my neck every day or under that kind of pressure and stock was something I was always interested in. Um, over that period of time, which was about four years as an assistant, um, I discovered Microstock and stock in general and the name iStock kept popping up there so that's where my career in stock began. In 2008, um, when I decided to move into stock, I took a huge leap of faith basically. My wife was pregnant with our first child. Um, I gave up my full-time job and I decided that it was time to start taking pictures that I truly wanted to do and start making what I'd call real money. I worked every hour you can imagine. When I got home I was working on my laptop doing research, editing images and at that time I was uploading to at least 15 stock libraries at the same time. There was different rules and methods and formulas that each one had so there was a lot of time and effort that went into it. I used to research other successful stock imagery and then try to put my own slant on something similar but I don't do that anymore. I try to grab inspiration from all sorts of areas particularly in the advertising world. I like to watch short video clips, uh, grab tears from magazines, uh, find imagery online and get inspiration from there. Uh, that's a much, much different process to before. I have to then bring creative people together to try and bring my ideas into reality. The weather here in the UK can be quite a challenge. We do have very mild days here most of the year. We have some sunny days, but most of the time it's raining. That can be very difficult for stock. So this year we decided to invest heavily in a studio so we can control the environment much better. So we've got smart furniture that's on wheels that moves in and out of the scene so we can create a bedroom or a lounge environment, an office setting or even a school classroom. So we've brought in little things like this plant that looks very realistic but of course it isn't and we've got things like this iPad which normally is a very expensive tool but this one of course isn't real. Anyone starting now will find a, a very different world in the micro stock industry than what I did in 2008. And what I found in 2008 was hugely different to anyone that started into the, in the beginning, in the early 2000s. However, it's not all doom and gloom like some people will tell you. You have to have a vision and an idea and stick with it. No matter how much negativity you read about any industry, there is always room for improvement, there is always more, there is always plenty for everybody. So. If you have the ability, if you are creative, if you are skilled, you will make money at Microstock. Do your research, plan well, bring the right kind of creative people together and never ever waver from your vision. Stick with it and you will be successful.